So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, being a passionate seeker. And I don't know about you, but but I do seek the Lord. This is the time to draw close to the Lord. He says, if you'll draw close to me, I will draw close to you. And so there are the, these are perilous times. And as we join together and, and, and come together uh, in one accord, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to move like a river tonight. I believe that he is going to just bring forth uh, those words uh, that he wants us to hear tonight. And uh, so uh, I'm going to turn it over to, to Brother Fred. Sherry sure said the title tonight is Passionate Seekers. Uh, I believe that uh, describes many of us uh, here in this meeting tonight that uh, we love the Lord and we're passionate about him. And, and I know it's important uh, to me because I've seen the difference in my life uh, when when we moved to this town, we were uh, 10 years uh, in a particular congregation, and we were active. We were uh, involved. Uh, but when we faced trouble, when door uh, death mm -hmm. stood at our door, then we got serious about God, and we diligently uh, sought God, and we went on a path, and that path continues today, that we're uh, seekers of God. We're mm -hmm. passionate seekers of God, and it's really made a difference in our lives, and I, and I believe in many of your lives as well. Uh, I want us to think about uh, some verses about uh, seeking God. Uh, the Bible talks a lot about seeking God, and we can think, first of all, about Matthew 6 when Jesus introduced the uh, Lord's Prayer, what we call the Lord's Prayer. Uh, he said, pray this way. Uh, start out in uh, Matthew 6, 9, about uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Well, that's not really a request. The request starts in verse 10, and the request is that your kingdom come and your will be done on the earth mm -hmm. as it is in heaven. So that's the question. That's the first thing. That's his priority. That is God's priority for his kingdom to come on the earth, his will to be done on the earth as it is yes, in heaven. heaven. Yeah. Now, right along with that, in verse 63, uh, 33 of the same chapter, mm -hmm. Matthew 6, it talks about seeking God's kingdom, seeking the kingdom first. So if that's his objective, that's his aim, that's his goal. And we are to align ourselves with his goal. His goal is to bring heaven to mm -hmm. earth. And that's our goal as well. So I want Sherry to read uh, this verse. And let me say, uh, just as an introduction to this uh, uh, message tonight, we're going to be talking about seeking God. And, I'm, and, and all of this is going to lead into the awakening. It's going to uh, be a part mm -hmm. of the awakening and advancing the awakening. And when you talk about an event, uh, you can really characterize it by questions like uh, where, when, what, how, uh, and why. And so these are the verses we're going to look at verses that explain why we're seeking, what we seek, when we seek, all of these things, those basic questions. And the first one then is uh, what are we seeking? And that's uh, here mm -hmm. in uh Matthew 6, verse 33, and I'll ask Sherry to read it first out of the New American Standard, and then we'll elaborate on it in the Amplified. But seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. That's the New American. Now out of the Amplified. But first and most importantly, seek aim, strive, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. So what are we to seek after? There it is. In a nutshell, it's the kingdom of God. It's his character, his nature, his way of doing things. We do that first. We 
seek it first mm -hmm. and most important that's, that's the most important thing that we can do seek the kingdom bring heaven to earth mm -hmm. bring the kingdom yeah. to earth now uh the next question we could ask is when do we seek well there of course it was also answered in the first mm -hmm. question that uh, seek him first mm -hmm. and most importantly but we also have it here in another verse in Amplified in Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8, 17. I love those who love me and those who seek me early and diligently will find me. Oh, hallelujah. So when do we seek him? Well, early <laughs> and diligently. And then we find him. So some questions we're going, just going through this process. What do we seek? The kingdom, the character, the nature of God, all about God. Mm -hmm. And when do we seek him? Early, diligently we seek him. And, and why? Well, the next verse is going to explain why do we seek him. It says in Psalm 69, verse 32, the humble have seen it and are glad. Ye, you who seek God, let your heart Revive. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do we seek him for our hearts our to be revived? revived? And that's where the awakening comes oh, in. Hallelujah. It's right there. From the when we revive, when people revive, then glory to God, they wake up. Uh, there's an awakening. And that's when we seek him, then we are contributing to the awakening. I want you to think about mm -hmm. Jonah for a moment. You know, Jonah. God called Jonah uh, as a prophet to go to uh, Nineveh to bring a revival, the greatest revival uh, in the history of the Bible, greatest one recorded. And, and what did, uh, he was to go to Nineveh and wake them up. That's the awakening. That's a revival, bring revival there. And what did Nineveh, and what did uh, Jonah do? He ran in the opposite direction and he went down, 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 and he, uh, went down to the down to the sea, and he went into a boat, and went down to the bottom of the boat, and the, and the ship's captain came down uh, when they're out there in the storm, and and called him sleeper. Oh, wow. sleeper. What what do you mean by this? Do you, do you know he's called to awaken a, a city of maybe hundreds of thousands of people, and, and yet he's called the sleeper. Why aren't you seeking God with us? We're all about to perish. And what the awakening is, is to wake people up. Well, that's all of us. We're all called to advance the well, awakening. awakening. So we can't be the sleeper uh, to advance oh, the awakening. Hallelujah. We have to seek God. And when we seek God, then that's when we're going to come alive. That's when our spirit man is going to come alive. I mean, this is I mean, such an important message, something that I I really uh, relate to. Uh, what, what is it? It's the kingdom. We're going to seek the kingdom. We're going to seek God. And, and when let's do it early. Let's do it diligently. Amen. And, and uh, well, because it's going to revive us. And uh, how, how do we do it? Well, that's the next verse. How do we do it? Sherry, you want to read that? Hey, is that Jeremiah 29? Yeah. Okay. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. How do we search? How do we seek him? With all of our heart. Oh, glory to God. I just want to keep going over these points. We're just seeking the kingdom. We're seeking God. We're seeking him early and we're seeking him diligently. And it's going to revive our heart. It's going to advance the awakening and we're going to but we're going to do it with all of our heart you have to do it with all of our heart mm -hmm. and, and uh, the next point i want to make but i want to do, introduce it though and that is where do you do it and i want to look at the life of asa uh, we'll get back to a particular verse in a minute but i want to look at the life of asa asa uh, became king of judah and uh, he began to seek the lord he began mm -hmm. to uh clean up some things and pull down some idols and and pull down some uh, uh, high high places uh, to idols and and to false gods and and he began to rebuild the altar 
and, and then everything was fine for about 10 years. And, that, and that, that's the reason I relate to Asa, uh, because everything was okay in my life for about 10 years after we moved to this city, but then trouble came. Yeah. And in this case, Asa uh, faced a lot of trouble. The Ethiopian army came uh, to conquer him. And uh, they came a million soldiers, a million strong. And they had chariots besides that, a mm. million people. Mm. Now, Asa didn't have that many people. He had been seeking the Lord, but I mean, he's about to get serious about things. <laughs> uh, he, he's about to get serious and he begins to pray to God uh, to deliver him. And you know, God did. When you... When you get serious about God, you're seeking him and you get serious about him and pro troubles come and problems come and you begin to reach out to him and, and uh, he will deliver you just like he did Asa, just like he did me, just like he did our family. He will deliver you. And then, uh, so Asa gathered up uh, his army of Judah and Benjamin and uh, they only had about a half a million people, but you know, they... They routed and defeated uh, this big army of a million soldiers. And they, and they ran after them and they defeated them and they took over many cities and they got much plunder and much uh, 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 spoil from that. They, they were very victorious. See, seeking God is very important. But what I want you to see, and this is uh, moving on, that was uh, Second Chronicles chapter 14, but I want to look at 15, because this is after the victory, and, and you know mm -hmm. what, what God sent out a prophet, mm -hmm. out a prophet to Asa to tell him something, right, and, and what he was going to tell him is, you need to be seeking me more diligently, we're going to move this thing to a higher level, they've been, they've been seeking him uh, for 10 years at about this level, now all of a sudden they're going to, God's uh, requesting and, and demanding of them to seek him at a higher level. Uh, and so this is what Asa says. Uh, I, I hears from uh, the prophet of God uh, in uh, 2 Chronicles 15, verse 2. And Azariah went out to meet Asa and said to him, so the prophet goes out uh, to, to say something to Asa, listen to me, Asa, and all Judea, and Benjamin, the Lord is with you when you are with him. And if you seek him, he will let you, let you find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Oh, glory. See, this is an incredible phrase. When you seek God, he will let you find him. Hallelujah. That means there's a lot of people out there that are not finding God. God. Amen. That they're they're going about religious yeah, things. Yeah, they're finding other things. They're, they're opening the doors so every time the church uh, building is open. They're going there. They're they're being faithful. I, that's the way I was for ten years. I, I was very involved yeah, with my we, local we, congregation. We were faithful, but I wasn't diligently seeking Him. And now God is saying here, this is a very important phrase: When you seek Me. I will let you find me. Woo, Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's, hallelujah. I get excited when I read that. And, and not only did he say it there, but he said it three times in this passage. When, when you seek me, I will let you find me. Glory oh, to God. Hallelujah. You, hallelujah. you know, there, there's a, a passage uh, in, in another uh, uh, book, Hosea 5.15, and he talked about some people that weren't able to, to find him. He said, I, I'm here, uh, but you need to humble yourself and, mm. and, uh, and uh, acknowledge what you've been doing and then seek me. So there's a lot of people, see? It, it's not just about acknowledging what we've been doing. It's not just about uh, confessing our sins and... and uh, uh, turning from our wicked ways, but it's also seeking God. So, you know, what I see a lot of times in uh, church congregations and services, people come down to the altar and they come down to the altar and they repent, but have they really sought God? Or are they going to seek God? Because there's two parts of it he's talking about here in Hosea 5, mm -hmm. verse 15. He said, 
what we need to be doing is repenting and seeking God. There's a lot of people that, that uh, feel guilty about what they've done, and they come to the altar and they uh, lay down their sins, mm -hmm. but they don't get up from there seeking God. Mm -hmm. They don't stay there seeking God. They don't get up seeking God. They don't seek God, and, and they're not going to find him. He said, you've got to repent and seek me to find me. Now I'm here. I'm here. I haven't left but you won't find me until you repent and seek me. So that's really an important, uh, important part. And I believe this is the most important thing that we can do in our lives is to seek God. Amen. He'll, when you seek him, he will tell you Amen. some things. Amen. He'll show you some things. Now, what I, what I want to point out with this story about Asa in uh, uh, second Chronicles chapters 14 and 15, and first he sought him, at one level, but I believe there was a standard grace, right. a higher right. level, more diligent, uh, that we need to seek him. And, and in the 15th chapter, let's let's seek him more. And that the 12th verse, they made a covenant as a group, as these tribes, yes. that they were going to seek him with all their heart. Now, I, I use this as a point for where did they seek? Where did they seek God? Well, because it was in Judah and Benjamin. That's all they were doing to begin with. But now they're reaching out to other tribes, Manasseh and, and Ephraim and, and uh, uh, Simeon there. Mm -hmm. They're reaching out to other tribes. They're going out there, going uh, just away from their home, and they're, and they're cleaning mm -hmm. up and pulling down high, high places and pulling down mm -hmm. idols. But another thing that was really important in this 15th chapter was uh, Asa looked inward. He looked inward, and what did he wow. find? He found his mother, the queen mother, with an idol, with her own false idol, and he pulled it down. Glory to God. He didn't pull it down in chapter 14 when he was seeking God, but in chapter 15, see, he went to a higher level of seeking God, and he had to do that. So he's not only is he looking out and, and going other places and even going to other tribes, but he's also looking inward. And I believe that's a part of what we all need to be doing. God wants us to move to a higher standard uh, of seeking God mm -hmm. more diligently with our heart. You know, they made a commitment, uh, not just as one person, but as a nation. They made a commitment to seek God. With Amen. Amen. And, 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 and he God, even removed his mother from being uh, queen mother. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, so he cleaned up his house. He cleaned up his what? house. We all need to clean up our house. Or do we have something? Oh, wow. And this is our house. Do we have something in there? Oh, uh, we may have uh, cleaned up some of the really bad stuff, but uh, is there something else? Uh, do we, we need to look inward. We also need to look outward and, and, mm -hmm. and bring down strongholds and bring down uh, demonic strongholds. And, and But we also need to be looking inward and cleaning up inward. So we we talked about five different things then about this seeking God and we've talked about what it is it's seeking the kingdom seeking God and his character we're doing talking about doing it early uh, when he can be found glory to God there's not going to do any good if we seek him when he can't be found so we need to know when we can find him seek him early and he will be found and we need to know uh, how we're going to do it we're going to do it with our heart and while we're going to do it it's going to revive us it's going to revive oh, us. Yeah. we're going to activate uh, in our heart but we're also going to be a part of the awakening no longer will be we be called a sleeper but we'll be out oh, yeah. there oh, yeah. bringing awake bringing waking up people waking them up glory to god you know this message is about seeing the supernatural mm. knowing what god is doing and witnessing what he's doing but I, I use the word on the title passionate seeking because there's a lot of people that at a very low level and they're just barely seeking him they they just think oh if i go to church on uh uh sunday maybe sunday morning or maybe once a month sunday morning or like my dad he, he went to church he was real uh, faithful on Easter Sunday, he, that was his time to go. Well, well, that's not seeking God at a real high level. I don't mind telling you. I, I believe God is 
calling all of us. Uh, to come to a a higher level. Level. And, and that's what we're saying tonight. Let's come to a higher Maybe. level. Seeking Amen. Let's let's look inward. Let's look outward. Let, let's let's don't be the sleeper. Let's don't be the one that somebody will come to us and say, why are you sleeping? Why aren't you seeking God? Like we're, we're perishing. That, that's what the captain of the ship was saying to Jonah. We're perishing. We're yeah, all we're perishing. perishing. We need somebody that's going to seek God. Hallelujah. Here, here you are asleep, and, and, and we need you awake. We need you to wake up and seek your God. And and when Jonah did that, he said, well, just throw me in the sea, and, and the sea became calm. But you know, God provided for Jonah, and, and he's when he was in the fish, he, he got swallowed up by fish. And, and when he was in there, a giant fish, a giant fish uh, all of a sudden, he had a change of heart. He had a change of heart. <laughs> change of heart. Amen. And, and that, that will change things. When you, slime all over you. you, you when you get uh, swallowed up by a giant fish uh, and you come to the end of yourself, it, it's time to repent and mm -hmm. to pay your vows. And he mm -hmm. paid his vows and he was thankful to God and you know, this is uh, here in America where we celebrate Thanksgiving. We need to have a grateful heart. Amen. And Amen. it's a time to be grateful for all that he's done. He does yes. so much for us. But but this is not a one-time event, uh, one meal. We say we're thankful. But this is being grateful. It's just something that's going to be very helpful to you uh, all year long. Be having a grateful heart, being diligent to seek seek God about about what He's doing. I'm so excited about seeking God. It's going to revive me. It's going to revive you. We're going to have an impact out there. And here's a benefit. Mm -hmm. So, what is a benefit? And this is the last verse uh, that I had for Sherry to read. This is a benefit you get from seeking God. But there's lots and lots of benefits. This is just one. I thought this was really significant in itself. Read this verse, Sherry, please. In Proverbs 28, verse 5, evil people do not understand justice. But those who seek the Lord understand justice. Everything. Ooh, glory to God. Does that excite oh, I'm you? Read it again. <laughs> Does that excite you? But those who seek the Lord understand everything. Well, that's a benefit. Is there something you don't understand? Oh, oh, yeah. Maybe you need to come to this higher level of seeking the Lord. Uh, when you really get serious about seeking the Lord, then things are going to change in your life. I mean, they did in my life. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I. I went for about 10 years after I moved to this city. Uh, and and I, I, the people in the congregation we were going to, they would have said we were very faithful and very, very good members of that congregation. Uh, and we were there when they opened the doors. And we were involved in the yeah. activities. But I tell you, we weren't at this level that I'm talking about tonight. And, and when trouble came to our door, just yeah. like when Asa, when the Ethiopian army of a million right. soldiers came right. to trouble at his door he sought god and, and they went to a higher level and, and there was at that time that god revealed to him if you seek me i will reveal Ooh. myself to Ooh, you. Hallelujah. Yeah, glory to god but see there's a lot of people he doesn't even reveal himself to because uh, they may repent they they may be sorry for what they've done but but they're still not seeking him we need to Move it to a higher level. We've sought him at one level, but he wants us to seek him at a greater level. I mean, diligence, look inside. Is there something that we've been uh, petting that he wasn't so happy about? We just said, oh, we'll just keep this one thing back and we'll pet it. That's why uh, also King Saul did. Mm -hmm. he, he said, oh, I killed a bunch of those things. Yeah. I killed a bunch of those people. I killed a bunch of animals and all, but yeah. I kept the best things back. Yeah. I, I brought the king back with I me. I brought the king back. I brought all of these sheep back. I brought all of them. I, I brought all of these good things back. So I, I got rid uh, of these really bad things in my life, but I, I just kept back a few little things to pet. Uh, but I, God... Is saying, no, the time is to go to a higher level. Get rid of all, look inside and, and seek me. And, and if you've got uh, something in your heart 
uh, some darkness there, some evil there, some sin there. Repent of it and seek me. See, it's not just enough to repent and go down to the altar and say, I repent of my sins. We, we've got to repent and seek God. Oh, hallelujah. That's when he will be found. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's not found by those people who repent, go down to the altar and lay their sins on the altar because he said, you've got to repent and seek me. And he's asking all of us to come to a higher level of seeking him. You know, that's what Sherry and I do. Uh, we're not satisfied of just routine things mm -hmm. and, and just going uh, to a church service every time the door is open. We are diligent, passionate seekers of the Lord. And, and when he says go to a prayer mountain, we go to a prayer mountain. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when he goes, to, when he says go to uh, uh, Azusa Street and I'm going to impart something to you, at Azusa Street, we went to Azusa Street, which is where the uh, major awakening happened in the United States in the early 1900s. Uh, we went there uh, because God's glory had been poured out there, but he wanted to impart some things to us there. Sometimes you have to go where he is pouring out, where his portals are, where mm -hmm. he's pouring out oh, his glory. Right. Right. You yeah. need to be around people who are on fire. Fire. We're, we can't just be uh, by ourselves and sitting in our home and, and thinking we've got everything that God has for us. No, no. Yeah. God has more for you th than you have. And, and he mm -hmm. wants you to seek him for it. And he will show you by his spirit where you're to go, when you're to go. See, just following routines and rigid schedules, uh, that can be a hindrance to you from seeking God and receiving the best that he has for you. Amen. Find out by the spirit how to seek him, when to seek him, why to seek him, where to seek him. Mm -hmm. See, I went through all of these questions. I gave you some verses, but there may be other verses that you need, uh, that need to be quickened to you to bring a life to you. And, and remember, when you seek him with all your heart and all of your diligence, he will show himself to you. We need to keep our revelation portal open. We need to oh, keep where he will reveal to us. And we're not Ooh. seeking him with all of our heart. We're not seeking him early. We're not seeking him first. Then that, that portal gets pushed aside. You know, I, I went it gets to- Gets closed up. It gets closed up. I, I, I went to a congregation one time and, the, and I'm a worshiper and, and I love to worship the Lord. And, and uh, but I was in a congregation and the pastor came to me and, and said I was uh, I was too active and I was moving around too much. And, and he, he was just swaying back and forth. And he uh, wasn't even dancing. I, I'm a dancer. I love to dance. But but he, he said, uh, don't do anything other than what you're doing. Just swaying back and forth, holding up your hands and praising the Lord. Don't. And I, I, this was my thinking. Well, he's the pastor. I'm here. I'll do what he said. <clears throat> so that's what I did for a few days. And then I saw a vision and I saw my heaven was open, was closed. Up. Oh, dear that, Jesus. That's my portal, my, my access to mm -hmm. heaven was being mm -hmm. closed up because I wasn't praising God like he created me to do. He created me mm -hmm. to praise him. I praise him. I'm a very vocal uh, Hallelujah! Demonstrative praiser of God. I, I, he has done so much in my life. I praise him, and and I don't want my revelation portal, my access, my entrance to heaven to be closed up. And I saw it there in the supernatural realm. This message tonight is about Hallelujah. witnessing the supernatural Hallelujah. realm. What God is Thank doing, you. knowing His heart and knowing His ways. And we've got to seek him. We've got to seek him diligently with all of our heart. Glory to God. You know, the nation of Israel there, I'm Judah, Judah and Benjamin and, and those other people from those other tribes, they made a covenant. We're going to seek him. You need to make an agreement with some people. Let's seek him. Uh, Sherry and I seek him. Our hearts are knit together. God knit our hearts together. Please seek him. And I believe that you're here tonight because you are a seeker. 
that you're a passionate that's seeker. That's right. That's that right. You, you didn't you didn't just happen here. Uh, this was not just a random event. You you just uh, showed up here and didn't even know what you were coming to. You knew. Yeah. You knew a little bit about what you were coming here and what you're going to because you want more of the fire. Uh, the bottom line here is to run to the fire. Run to the fire. Hallelujah. Find out where the fire is and run to run it. Run to it. Stay on fire for God. Seek him. Seek him early while he may be found. And he will reveal himself to you. Thank Amen. you for Thank being you with Jesus. us tonight. And you, I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Thank she you, may Jesus. have something Thank to say. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, my spirit man is just leaping uh, at that one word of, of, of revelation. You know, many people do not walk in the book of Revelation because they think it's an end time book. They think it's something that's going to happen later on. But did you know he wants us to walk in it right now? He wants us to walk in the book of Revelation. Now, just, just think about it. You know, don't toss it away. Even though it doesn't, you know, agree with what your, your mind is telling you. But when I say walk in the book of Revelation, I'm talking about seeing who Jesus really is, seeing him on the white horse, seeing him making war, see him with the sword in his mouth, see the churches and what, what the spirit of the Lord said to the churches. He's talking to us. Who are you talking to, Lord? I'm talking to you. And so walking in that book of Revelation will bring us to a higher level. And also, Brother Fred was talking about not letting your Revelation portal be closed up. And that, that all comes down to, to seeking him and having a desire to be in his presence and having a desire uh, to praise him and pray and worship and 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 study his word and and just find out about him you know we can we can search throughout eternity and we will never know the the completeness of our father because he is english words won't, won't even ex, ex, explain what i'm trying to say as far as his fullness, his fullness. And I want to know that. I want to, I want to, to have him reveal to me. And like Brady, uh, Brother Fred said, you know, we, we were happy. We were happy teaching our little um, royal ambassadors. We were happy uh, about going and cleaning the bathrooms. We were happy. Um, uh, teaching the teenagers we we were happy little campers until death came to our door and the doctors told us that our daughter was going to die because she had no immunity system and Amy Elizabeth's on with us tonight death came to our door and that's when we began to say there has to be more because God gave us this daughter. And there has to be more to what who he is and what he is and 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 what is his his being. There's more. And that's when we began to seek him with our whole heart. And uh so you don't have to let trouble come to your door uh in order to begin right now just seeking him even more than you're seeking him uh and and i'm not talking about a rigid schedule i'm not talking about um uh, things that bind you up and cause hindrances to come to you i i'm talking about um seeking when you're driving your car seeking when you're taking a shower seeking when you're uh, uh working in in your workplace seek him uh, just begin to to think on him and 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 when you do that, then he's gonna take hold with you against 
anything that has come to harm you. And that's in Romans 8, 26. The Holy Spirit, when he sees you seeking uh, the presence of the Lord, he's there and he will open up the scriptures to you. He will open up the way of escape to you. He will tell you what to do. Hallelujah. Did you know that, that we're not alone just walking down the pathway and we have nobody with us? We have the Lord with us. And so that's why uh, the Lord put this, this uh, message in our heart, uh, which is very much connected with bringing the awakening uh, to all of those that are around you. What is your portion? What is your portion? Know your portion. Know who God has given you to, to minister to and, and bring that awakening to them. Don't run and, and jump in a boat and get swallowed up by the big fish. But, but do, do what you're supposed to be doing and you'll stay out of the fish's belly. Hallelujah. That'll preach. Praise God. Well, I'm going to open up the floor. Uh, if anyone has uh, a comment uh, they want to make about this uh, passionate seeking, uh, just bring it forth. Bring forth. If you have a scripture, if you have a, a word from the Lord, if you uh, just bring it on, bring it on to us. Well, I wanted to say that when you were reading that scripture about seeking the Lord early, the context implies that early in the morning, but what the Lord dropped in my spirit is early on in the situation. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Um, you know, before it all hits the fan <laughs> or, you know, and you, that other scripture about those that seek after the Lord will know all things. Mm -hmm. I believe he'll show you what's coming. Yes. And so he can further direct your prayers by the spirit because you'll, he'll navigate you through what's coming, Amen. but to seek him early on, don't, don't try all this other stuff and do your own <laughs> thing. And well, I guess I better seek God. I'm going to, I'm at a corner here and I don't know how to get out. So Amen. I just thought I would Amen. toss that in there. Good. Amen. That's good. Excellent. Great. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Somebody else. I did actually have something to share and oh, please, please. it's, um, it's kind of funny. We're talking about this because even, you know, the word tells us that God is always in the details. And even this, to this morning, when I was going to get gas in my car, I said, God, I need some help. Where do you want me to go? He told me exactly which gas station to go to. Mm. And he said, um, he said, you'll have a surprise there waiting for you. So I got there, <laughs> the sign for the gas that said it was 309. And I thought, oh, that's pretty good. That's not bad. I pull up to the pump and it was 299. <laughs> I said, well, praise Jesus, that's even better. And then I got even additional off because I had a gas card with them and got even more off. And I said, oh my gosh. And I thought, you know, it's, it was these small minor details that even I could have just gotten in the car and went to the nearest gas station. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, go to this one. And it was in that act of obedience that I got that, uh, that revelation from God. That's Amen. exactly right. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Somebody else. Thank you as well. Mm -hmm. You got something, Eddie? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. I, I was I was thinking one of the things that that part of what Fred's talking about here is knowing who you are in Christ. I uh, am. And I and of course David came to me about when he was standing uh, standing against the giant the Philistines, and the comment that he made uh, it just always amazes me. He says, "Who is this uncircumcised?" <laughs> Philistine that stands against the army of God. Amen. David knew who he was. Right. And that's part of what you're teaching us is yeah. part of that is the fact that we've got to have an understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus, that, that the authority that was given to the apostles then Amen. 
later was given to all believers. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, learning how to walk in that is, it's, it's one of those things easy to preach, but hard to do sometimes. But Amen. But anyway. That's good. That's good, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Somebody else? Okay, Judy. You know, a lot of times we don't know what God is doing with us. That's right. We, we have the revelation on the path that we can see right before us. But sometimes it's years later, we see what he was doing all along. <laughs> and we still don't see the end of it because it is so much bigger, so much greater than we could ever conceive, that Amen. we could ever think that he would do. And, and so let's just keep our eyes open and follow each step. We just have to follow each step and then he will do mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that we just cannot conceive. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank oh. you. Thank you. Praise the name of Jesus. Someone else? Well, Fred, I want to just wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. I, I don't know how many this makes, but it doesn't really matter because it's not <laughs> you're still a young man. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But the Lord was speaking to me a while ago when, when Sherry said that it was your birthday, that uh, he kind of dropped into my spirit that uh, uh, that you're actually going to be more fruitful in the years ahead. Ooh, Amen. 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 You know, Amen. Yeah. Being a farmer, you know, sometimes the, the wheat crop is not what it should have been, but then there's other times when it's really been good. And uh, I think I think uh, the days ahead are going to be more fruitful than they've ever been in y'all's ministry. Oh, Amen. hallelujah. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Blessings to you. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Was that was that Alexa speaking to you? <laughs> Sometimes she just speaks, you know, whenever she wants to speak. Uh, it's a very scary thing. Hallelujah. I don't think it was the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Does anyone else have? Uh, something about the the message, or uh, what? You, what are you going to do with this message? You know, I always ask Brother Fred about about that when he when he brings it to me, and we pray and seek the Lord, and and I say, okay, well, you know, what do I do uh, with this message? Uh, what am I going to do about it? I want to be a doer of the word, and not just a a hearer only, and so. You know, does does this encourage you to uh, to spend more time in His presence? This is I mean, more time in prayer, more time in in being uh, a witness and in, in telling others about your experiences with the Lord. You know. Yes. Okay, Dana. I want to say that this, this has been an awesome message as they all are, but it has, I've took a lot of notes, four pages of notes. And, um, I know all the verses to go back and read over and, um, it's teaching us more on seeking him and, and to passionately seek him. Yeah. And I will be seeking him more than I did. And I also want to tell Brother Fred, happy birthday. And I know you are going to have a year full of blessings ahead. Amen. Uh, thank you. Thank, Amen. You. thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Okay, someone else. 
<laughs> well, this I, I don't have my camera on, but um, I'm going to take this message and I'm going to mull it over. And I'm gonna, <laughs> You're going to uh, mull it over? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to mull it over. I'm going to. Um, Is that Alabama <laughs> talk? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> And uh, anyway, going going to dig deeper into it, and uh, actually, I'm going to use this. A lot of this will be part of the teaching that I will bring out uh, that I'll share at church. So, Amen. It, 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 you know, when when and, and brother Fred, what you pour out, you pour it out so simple, and what you're going to reap from this is just going to be over and abundant of what you could even, as uh, the scripture says, even what you could ask or think. So, Amen. So, uh, Amen. And, uh, and this is it's very encouraging to me because, uh, and so Sherry, you, know, you and Brother Fred know that I'm, I've been in a, it seems like a constant fight. And um, this just encourages me, especially the one about um, he that uh, seeks the Lord knows all things because that's, that's one of the places I get attack that you know you, you you just think you know everything and, and i really don't i don't think i know anything but what the holy spirit teaches me is what yeah. i do yeah. so uh you anyway, know just very encouraging and it just uh is one of those things that makes me uh dig my heels in that much deeper and makes me determined to keep on keeping on hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. See, as this message uh, germinated and, and uh, began to mature, and, and Cherry and I have uh, several discussions about it over the week and uh, or, or last few days, uh, we we started talking about witnessing, witnessing what God is doing. Mm. And, and that's really an essence of, of this message. But I didn't want you to think that witnessing the supernatural realm uh, is something you can do passionately. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, without some some positive, uh, proactive, being proactive, mm -hmm. uh, that you can't just expect all of this to happen in your sight as you're walking down the road, looking at the supernatural mm -hmm. realm. There is some proactive. Uh, a measure that you need to make and put into this, a lot of people are just saying, well, if I see something, I will be a witness of it. I will tell people what I see in the supernatural realm. Uh, what I found, and, and like I, I keep referring to that 10 years, uh, many which was many years ago, uh, it's been 40 years uh, that we've been passionately mm -hmm. seeking the Lord. But in that 10 years, we were well, sure, if I had seen something in the supernatural, I, I would have witnessed to that. Uh, well, I've seen this in the supernatural. I never saw anything in the supernatural realm. That 10-year period is just like Asa. Asa was just going along, uh, being a good king, doing good things, and he wasn't seeing much. Uh, but when he began to diligently seek God, and God began to show him that he can go even to a higher level, and, and so that's that's what we're talking about in this message uh, is it's a proactive stance that, that we're going to be seeking him. We're going to be expecting to see the supernatural yes, realm yeah, and, and not just thinking, well, if I ever see something <laughs> in the supernatural realm, I'll witness it. I'll go this, tell somebody. But, but no, this is, hey, I want to see. I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you high and lifted up. I want to see what you're doing. I want to know what's in your heart. I want to see, experience uh, the supernatural, uh, uh, the the supernatural moving of the Holy Spirit. I want to see it. I want to be involved in it. I want to participate in it. I want to be proactive and, and not just sitting around uh, passively. That was a word I tried. Uh, that's the word I was trying to look for a while ago. Was I want to just be passive about this and think, well, if the Lord reveals something to me. Uh, supernaturally, if I see it, or somebody healed, or I see a miracle, or then I will witness to it. No, if we're seeking Him, we're going to be seeing that all the time. We're going to know what he is doing, we're going to see what He is doing, and we will have something to share with others. Amen. Amen.